So I've been trading about four years, got in around 2019 before all the COVID chaos. And I had my introduction through social media. I have a couple buddies out there in Vernal that run crypto YouTube channels. But eventually, after diving in the rabbit hole, I found my place in the Forex market. And after flipping accounts for a few years, I really started to find my success with prop firms and TFT in general. Oh, so you're doing the account flips. Yeah. Dude, every, literally everyone says they were doing account mm -hmm. flips. It's crazy. Yeah, and it gave me a, a bad start or at least bad expectations because I put like $250 into an account to start and went full margin, <laughs> made a little over five grand, and then lost it shortly after in the crypto market. And that's how it happens. <laughs> so it's crazy. Like that is so insane though to even flip 250 to five grand. Yeah. Right? Like how are you feeling when that happened? Uh, I was just, that's where all the greed kicked in, you know, and from there it's just been more managing my expectations to know that that's not sustainable or realistic. So it just, I'm maturing as a person and trader and just trying to shift my mindset around that. Just look for more longevity. What motivated you to originally get in to start trading? It was the money and the lifestyle that everyone pushed on social media. Yep. Yep. And around this time, like, what were you doing? Right. Uh, when I first got into it, I was an electrician and yeah, just working construction. I'm in the oil field industry now. Mm -hmm. And so it's really long hours. It's not a really sustainable lifestyle. So blue collar. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Super blue collar. So obviously when you're working this type of job, it's, probably difficult to trade during work. Yeah. Or even you can't realistically, right? Mm -hmm. So um, when you first got started, like were you, and even now, were, when were you actually trading, right? Like how many hours were you putting into this? It was still all at work. I would just be on my phone throughout the day. Mm -hmm. I, uh, when I got off work, it was late into the Asian session. So there's not the volume that I'm looking for at those times. Yeah, Asian session is terrible. <laughs> yeah, but at least what I'm doing now, I'm more or less just sitting there like in my post for the whole day. So I have time to get caught up on all my education and take my trades, usually catch the New York session in the mornings. Mm -hmm. And then I, the goal is to just take my trade and be out. And I don't want to hold into the Asian session. So I'm primarily a scalper. Oh, so you're a scalper. Yeah, trade gold. Okay, fair enough. Oh, we were talking a little bit about this at dinner. Yeah. So scalping on TFT obviously isn't ideal. Right. There's a lot of there's spread, there's slippage, there's commissions. Right. How do you manage to to scalp and what broker to use? Uh, I was using a cap. Mm -hmm. I guess there's been changes that they don't offer them on the 100K account anymore. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go through a purple trading and see how that goes. But it really doesn't take much. If you're looking for half a percent to a percent a day, you can, you know, get your 50, 100 pips and get out. It happens quick on gold. So. And you're exclusively on gold. Yeah, I've had some success with Euro USD dollar pairs, but I've really had my breakthrough with gold. And it's easier for me to manage focusing on the one pair. There's been a lot of gold traders that have come through here that are scalping and trading gold, right? Um, mm -hmm. wh why do you feel like it's a good pair to trade? The volatility? Yeah, the volatility. I can be in and out within an hour or so. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the move. So let's walk through then in terms of how you trying to execute on gold, right? Let's walk through mm -hmm. what you actually do to get in to get in a trade. Are you marking up your charts in the week like during the week, right? Like how do you how do you go about getting in? Yeah, I'll do my weekly check-ins on Sunday and then I'm just checking in daily looking for the I'll form my bias on the 4 hour to hourly time frame mm -hmm. and then I'll execute on the 15 minute. And I would Describe my strategy as looking for stop hunts or uh, execute on like the extreme points of structure where let's say it's, it's bullish and we get a pullback where normally traders would jump in on a breakout. I'll be trying to fade the move. So that's how I look at it. Just catch my pullback and get out. So you're trying to do the opposite of the masses. Yes. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, what, who told you that? Uh, I've gone through a lot of different educators and mentors and just have taken like what I can from a lot of them mm -hmm. and just adjusted my strategy to fit my personality and you, you seem know. like pretty chill dude for the most part yeah you I, seem like pretty calm yeah just pretty chill yeah I guess stress management would be a big thing with mm -hmm. work and stuff because 
yeah, when you have all that extra stimulation and stuff going on, it's not, you know, ideal for a scalper. Mm -hmm. So it would be cool to be a little bit more isolated. Have you tried other strategies besides scalping? Uh, yeah, a little bit, kind of intraday. And usually I'm trying to transition more into an intraday swing mm -hmm. trader. Cause to capture of, like more of the move. Yeah, a lot of the time I'll get in early and then I just take my pips and get out and I'll watch the market continue in my direction. <laughs> like so much in your yeah, direction. And that sucks. Because like, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> you're like make a thousand bucks, you're like, damn, this could have been 6K. Mm -hmm. <laughs>